Why, happy, happy Tuesday. The glorious Tuesday here in the southern United States of Texas. About 77 degrees outside per my uh, car on my way home from work. But this video right here is going to be an interesting video for me because it's something that I normally don't do. It's not necessarily a review video, but it's going to be a semi-review review video. Now this is inspired by the volcano rescue from Wakari, also known as the White Island Volcano in New Zealand. Now this documentary doesn't really go into great details of the inner workings of the tourist um, employment, well, not employment, but the company around the tourists going to the volcano. It pretty much tells you a story of the events as they happen from the survivors and the people that were semi-involved within the rescue and whatnot. But there was an interesting scene at the end where it says no group has taken responsibility for the tragic lives that were lost or injured which got me thinking you're going to a volcano that's active it's been has erupted several times within this decade i'm over 40 years old and it's erupted three or four times within the period of i've been alive doing a little bit of research onto it and i, I understand that Companies that do tours of volcanoes really should let people know that, hey, this could go off at any minute, but we think it's not going to go off today, and here's the reasons why. I understand from that standpoint that they have that level of responsibility, but at the same time, you're going to an active volcano. But of course, could Wakakari volcano erupt again? Um, this is just a 31 second video, and so we'll go ahead and watch it. I think they showed some of this on on the documentary or parts of it. Uh, yeah, it's off. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is a an active volcano and should be taken seriously, and you shouldn't be haphazardly going. Um, it's not like Yellowstone with Old Faithful with the geysers. Uh, don't think Yellowstone's going to be going off anytime soon. But I just thought it was interesting, a different perspective. But of course, this, this story goes a little bit more in detail. Three years ago, a volcano off the coast of New Zealand erupted, killing 22 of the 47 tourists on the island at the time. In the years since, the volcano has not erupted, but has shown constant low-level activity. But Waakari, also known as White Island, is an active volcano that could erupt again at any moment and the moment that no one really knows what's going on inside. The, the monitoring of Waakari has remained steady or slightly declining since 2019 because no one's been on the volcano since then. Because no one's been able to visit to service the seismic or size size oh yeah seismic stations, Shane Corin, a volcanoist, volcanologist, and Walkari expert at the University of Auckland in New Zealand, told Newsweek, "These are running on minimal maintenance at the present, because yeah, when I don't think anyone's allowed to go in there because." 22 of the 47 tourists that were on the volcano are dead. And they don't want to repeat because you really can't rescue someone, even though this is a um, it was a rather mild eruption, I guess you could call it. But it's still very dangerous. The next eruption could happen anytime, given that the volcano can be triggered by several different mechanisms, both internal, new magma, or external Ceiling of the top, which both are highly unpredictable. Recent volcano eruption in 2019 
begin on December 8th at 2.11 p.m. local time, spewing scalding hot steam and flinging a plume of ash 1,200 no, 12,000 feet into the air, coating those on the island with a wave of boiling hot gas and other volcanic materials. That's one thing that they did point out, that they were pretty much boiled. The skin that was coming off was, wasn't was due to magma, but it was due to steam boiling it, their, their skin off, which is pretty gruesome to think about. The majority of the survivors needed intensive medical treatment for their burns, some of which were covering 80% of their bodies. The 22 who were killed died from severe burns, from the point of the eruption, it took the majority of the victims at least 90 minutes, a 90 minute boat journey from the island to the mainland to reach the hospital. Others were rescued by helicopters operated by local commercial pilots because the government told rescue to stand down. Um, yeah, that's pretty interesting. The, the, the local commercial pilots went there and they were told that, hey, you're on your own. They're not going to come. They're not going to send helicopters. They're not going to send boats, which was pretty, pretty alarming because they deemed it to be unsafe because the volcano was continually erupting. Walakari sits about 30 miles off the coast of New Zealand. The island is merely the peak of an enormous underwater volcano, which measures... 500, not 500, but 5,249 feet from the seafloor. Wakari is a strato volcano, meaning that it has a distinctive conal shape made up of several layers built over a millennium of volcano activities. Other famous strato volcanoes include Mount Venezuela's in Italy, Mount St. Helens in Washington State, and a Krakatoa in Indonesia. While we can't predict exactly when volcanoes will erupt, changes in seismic activity often precedes an eruption, so scientists monitor volcanic seismic activity and track changes giving clues as to when the eruption might be about to take place. Wakari is a particular unpredictable volcano as magma is often present and rests only a few miles below the crater lake area. Magma is stiff and vigorous, not like the running lava of Kiliara. I think that's the Hawaiian one. Prono said it squeezes up slowly and maintains, and mainly it cools and hardens as gas escapes. From it, the heat and gas from the magma is constantly changing the rock above or and around it, especially when rainwater water pro prolects it down and is heated and chemically modified by magma gases. So it pretty much erodes and becomes a clay-like substance. The water becomes acid, mainly sulfuric acid, which is an old-style car battery. The acid, water, and gases eat away at the rocks until it becomes soft clay. This means that the top of the volcano has hot gas seeps, hot water pools, and a lot of acid steam. With very colorful hydrothermic minerals, this can be quite hurty. Think of it as Yellowstone on a small scale, but temperatures of these gases or gas vents can be very hot around 400 degrees Celsius, which shows how close the magma is to the surface at Wakari. Wakari's make up the means of small of any changes, pressures, magma changes, which can lead to eruptions, many of which are hard to detect because they don't create much seismic activity. And of course, volcano activities across New Zealand is monitored by the country's research institution, GNS Science, in the case of Wakatari, Wakakari, I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing that name wrong, heightened the activity often associated with geysering and strong stream venting, sometimes changes in the crater lakes, or even drying out 
of the crater lakes. Typical eruption likelihood in New Zealand is estimated through a process called expert elicitation, in which scientists on the GNS Volcano Monitoring Team are asked to estimate the eruption likelihood for a certain period for rapid, rapid onset eruptions. This method can be slow to update. Alberto Arad, a volcanist and geophysicist at the University of Canterbury in New Zealand, told Newsweek this is because it relies on expert judgment and consensus seeking. So the availability of those experts to be considered. That being said, an expert excitation one week before the 2019 eruption concluded that there was an increased likelihood of an eruption. The alert level of the volcano was increased to level 2 several weeks prior to the eruption on November 15, which indicated an increased volcanic unrest with the potential for eruption. So I guess it could be a, a new law in New Zealand if there's a level 2 you don't send tourists out there. But it's very unpredictable. Um, of course, a woman whose dad and sister were killed in New Zealand volcano reps, Mark of Burn University. So, I mean, a lot of people were burnt on here. I mean, figuratively burnt. And of course, there's this one from nature.com. Charge dropped against New Zealand science agency after deadly volcano eruption. The charge related to how GNC science communicated volcano risks to the public led up to the 2019 eruption on Wakari Wright Island, a white island. Volcanoists have applauded a judge's decision to dismiss one of the two criminal charges against New Zealand's Earth Science Research Agency, GNS Science. The charges were laid in the wake of the fatal 2019 volcanic eruption of Wakari White Island, a popular tourist destination that killed 22 people and injured 25 others. Very tragic. GNS Science issued volcanic alert bulletins for the country's active volcanoes, which are decimated into the media, emergency response agency, and the public through a service called GeoNet. The dismissed charges allege that GeoScience should have coordinated with tour operators, should be the other way around, tour operators should be in contact with them to make sure that the volcano is safe, and other agencies to review its volcanic alert bulletins to ensure that they effectively communicated the implications of volcanic activity on Wakari at White Island, with the charges being dismissed, scientific organizations are provided information on the public health and safety risk. Can now breathe a sigh of relief, says Simon Cannell, a lawyer and specialist in accident law at the University of Otago in Durlin, New Zealand. The legal repeat came after the judge dismissed a similar case against the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, in May because the workplace health and safety Obligations do not exceed to the terrorists and tour operators harmed in the eruption. The ruling did not consider whether NEMA had done the job properly. The decision was significantly weakened the case against GNS Science on October 6. WorkSafe New Zealand, the country's workplace health safety regulator, consent to the agency's application that have the charge dismissed. Regulatorial has also changed GNS science with having to fail to ensure the health and safety the helicopter pilots hired to take its employee to the island. This charge will go to trial and carries a penalty up to a fine of 1 million zillion, whatever NZ is, about 844,000 US. The GNS science has pleaded not guilty. Um, but you Take the risk. I mean, you're going to a volcano. So you personally will have to take that risk. I mean, yes, you need to go consult the experts to see what level of it is at. But at the end of the day, you make that decision. Now, I do hold the tourists somewhat responsible because it did say that it was an active volcano. 
But at the same time, they need to be able to ask these questions. When's the last time it erupted? When was the time before that? And make a judgment call prior to going to the the volcano. And that should be a volunteered information because it, it's an active volcano. I don't know. It's a tragic. It's a tragic thing that happened, and I don't know how I feel about it because I see all kinds of arguments, and I don't know which argument's correct. I don't know. This is just for a video essay that's based off of a documentary I saw over the weekend. But that being said, that is my video. This has gone long enough. Leave a comment down below on what your thoughts are. If you want to, you can smash the like and subscribe button and that tells me that you like these type of videos. You can also say that in the comment section. But most importantly, have yourself a wonderful day, morning, or evening.